Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at San Antonio at Edgewood Stadium, and we're about ready to take on District 14, Class 5A Division II rival, the San Antonio Memorial Minutemen. Their head coaches, Kimmy Lewis, they come into the contest at 1-3 and three overall, 0-1 in district play. Lockhart, the Lions come in at 2-2 two and two overall, 0-1 in district play, as you all know. Brian Herman, the head coach, and he runs that infamous slot T offense. Tonight's team, we have QA, Pepe Lugo. He's new with us. We've not had him before. This makes three weeks in a row that we've had a new QA, and we're glad to have you aboard with us, Pepe. Thanks a lot for being here and making sure we sound okay on the air. As far as the rest of the team's concerned, we could not be on the air if it wasn't for senior McKelty Altier as she brings you the production tonight. Ah, yes. That's right. That's McKelty Altier, the ever popular, the great athlete. What can't she do? Anyways, we bring you the Sarge, Emilio Juarez. He's the color commentator. He's going to give you stats. going to give you the district scores for tonight's games. Going to throw a shout-out already to Rudy Cadillo, the eye in the sky, the guy that does everything away from where we're at every night. He's at the volleyball match tonight, and he's going to keep us informed. I already know the freshman team won tonight, so thank you, Rudy, for that information. And then you got myself, Scott Smith, with play-by-play -play here as we're about – 26 minutes away from the start of the kickoff, we, uh, we've got all kinds of action going on. It looks like we're going to have homecoming tonight for Memorial Minutemen. And as Emilio and I were talking, why would they name their school and mascot this? It's a tongue twister. It's hard enough to say it one time, let alone <laughs> two in a row. But we're going to try not to butcher very often. But the Memorial Minutemen, that's going to be tough to say over and over all night long. So there you have it. I'm going to go ahead now and hand it off to the Sarge and let him talk about what he thinks about tonight's contest and what we're going to have to do to get a win tonight. Yes, definitely. Welcome, everybody, on to the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show here on the Lion Country Broadcast Network. And, Scott, tonight we got a matchup between the Lockhart Lions and the Memorial Minutemen in, in a district game to where it's very critical to where – the team that loses this game is practically out of the playoffs. And, you know, it's going to be a very hard and high uphill <coughs> climb. So this is a, a after last week's loss to to Medina Valley on a three-point three point loss, this is a big game for the Lockhart Lions to get back into the win column and to stay in the playoff hunt, especially when we got a, we got a, a bye week next week. But right after that, we got a Bernie champion at Bernie, and then we got Alamo Heights at home, which is going to be exciting. And because uh, last time Alamo Heights was in Lockhart, Lockhart defeated Alamo Heights. And for that game, at halftime, we're going to have a special guest there. So we're still three weeks away from that. But tonight, we got Lockhart and uh, Memorial here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. And this is a nice stadium. And, you know, Lockhart, as we mentioned last week, lost to Medina Valley 23-19. to Last week, they pretty much bottled up. Uh, Daquan Ellison, who only totaled 49 yards in the game, and that's well below his average as well as uh, Jesus, Jesus Aldana was well below. But the bright spot for the Lockhart Lions, Daquan Ellison in his second game comes back and rushes, uh, has 19 rushes for 130 yards, and, of course, he got the Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. So tonight, pretty much we got all our uh, – all our big linemen back off of injuries or nicks and acts, so they're pretty close to 100%. The only question we have now is Jackie Edwards Jr. is going to be the starter for the second game in a row. Coach Herman was pleased how on, on his start last week, and you'll hear more about that in the Christ Market Coach's Corner as I interviewed Coach uh, Herman before, you know, just after they arrived today. But he had a lot of nice things to say about Jackie Edwards and uh, – didn't mention how long uh, Jaden Garza was going to be out, but it looks like from this point on, Jackie Edwards Jr., the sophomore, is going to be the one leading the Lockhart Lions the rest of the way. Well, and getting, getting away from that, I'm going to go into a personal matter now. So I've spent the last two days in San Marcos at the hospital. So my father, Clarence Smith, who's supposed to be listening, decided he wanted to pull one on us and have a heart <laughs> attack two days ago. Uh, he decided to do this bright and early in the morning so that we could all get up and, you know, and go be there. And the old fart is strong as all get out because you would not know that he had a heart attack literally 
less than 48 hours ago. And he's listening in his room right now. And I want to wish him well. Definitely. definitely. The, and, 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 you know, the good thing, I guess, if you want to call a good thing about a heart attack, what also happened in that situation is that it brought my son, Gunnar Smith, down here, who's in the booth with us tonight. And he's a little bitty uh, portion of me. Um, he's actually twice my size and a lot better looking. But um, he's in the booth with us tonight. We may actually have him on here talking. But we just wanted to wish my dad well. Uh, yes, he definitely. is an amazing specimen at the age of 82. The fact that he can act like nothing happened 48 hours ago and he had a severe heart attack so want to wish him well and uh, glad he's on the men's and getting better give a shout out to my mother who's watching the children which are their two poodles and give a shout out to her uh, again Rudy Cadillo is going to be our eyes in the sky for the volleyball he's going to tell us what's going on there and I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and go to your your coach's corner and we'll do some interviews there and then I've got some interviews with the players that will run a little bit later so I'm going to hand it back off now to Emilio and let him do his coach's corner roundup yes definitely big wish big prayers and uh and fast recovery for Mr. Smith and uh I hope every I hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast as we will enjoy it and right now, we're going to get to listen to Coach Brian Herman, head coach of the Lockhart Lions. And this is going to be your Christ Market, your, your Christ Market Coach's Corner here on the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. All right, welcome tonight to the Christ Market Coach's Corner. I'm Emilio Sarge Wise. I'm here with the head coach of the Lockhart Lions, Coach Brian Herman. How you doing, Coach? I'm good, I'm good. All right, last week we had another heartbreaking loss of uh, three points, 23 to 21 to uh, Medina Valley. Talk about that game real quick and uh, what you felt could have changed, the, changed the, the, the turn of events for that game last week. Well, as a game of inches, I was just talking with Coach Lewis from Memorial, and he was saying the same thing. You know, we an inch here, an inch there, whether it be the onside kick recovery, both of them, uh, whether it be the, you know, the, the extra point block return for a touchdown. I mean, we lost by four. And if it comes down to it, it's the extra points. You know, we make our extra points, and it's 21-21. We're playing in overtime. Statistically, we were fairly even across the board, almost in every category. Ultimately, it was the points on the board, and it, and it, it obviously was the extra points that, that did us in. Okay. Last week, we saw the start of sophomore quarterback uh, Jackie Edwards Jr. Is uh, is he going to be the starter tonight, or we're going to see uh, Jaden Garza back back on any center? No, Jackie's still the starter. Um, Jaden's out, you know, with injury, so we'll we'll take him and see how he's going. I mean, I, I haven't got the results back yet of uh, where he's at and where where he's going to be and what his prognosis is long term. Um, but Jackie's our starter, and I was really pleased with him last week. I thought he did an outstanding job. Uh, you know, he threw a few balls and and he put the balls in safe places where we could get it or nobody else was going to get it. Uh, made good decisions with the ball even when the plays broke down a couple times. Uh, he tried to make something happen uh, safely with his feet, and uh, he didn't put us in any, any negative situations, so I was really proud of him. Yes, definitely. We also noticed how well he was able to disguise the handoffs. Of course, with, with in the slot T, you have about maybe a possible two, three fake handoff before you actually hand the ball off to somebody. Talk about his... Uh, his presence in the game and you know what what pleased you the most about him well, Jackie's an athlete he, he's got great hands and that's that's what's first and foremost uh, important for the quarterback because they've got to have good hands what we call it deal the cards you know kind of like a magician he's got to get the ball to the right place at the right time uh, with a lot of stuff going on in the backfield so he does a great job because he's an athlete he plays basketball he plays baseball he's just an all-around athlete uh, that's why we love him so much in, in that position but also you know this week we focused a little bit more on his after the handoff you know, faking the ball and or, or giving the ball and then faking out uh, out the backside to try to draw some attention because you know he's athletic and so people have to respect him if he keeps it at some point. So we want to see him do a little bit more after the handoff. But he did a great job getting the ball where he needed to last week. Okay, tonight we got San Antonio Memorial Minutemen who are, who are struggling this year. Um, what are the key players that y'all y'all are keen on for this uh, Minutemen team? Uh, their quarterback, their running back, uh, they've got a couple of big defensive ends that, that are pretty intimidating. Uh, their offensive line is very large, uh, so you know, they've got a couple of really good receivers too, 14 and 15. 15 on the jet sweep, 14 with his hands. Uh, so there's, you know, 21 is a running back, he's also an outside linebacker. Uh, so there's, there's a lot to contend. Uh, the quarterback's number one, the defensive end's number 10 and uh, 92. So you know, they've got a bunch of good football players and they were district champs last year. So they're used to winning 
Uh, they've had a tough go at the beginning of this year because they graduated some off that team. And they're, you know, just like us, they're trying to fit the pieces. You know, last week, if you look at what we did, we had three either different or new kids in the backfield in terms of Jesus was in a new position, Daytron was starting for the first time, uh, and then Jackie Edwards. So, uh, you know, three out of our four backs last year, last week were in either uh, new positions or starting for the first time. So it's, it's a feeling out process, and we're, you know, into our fifth game, and hopefully each week it looks a little bit more uh, smooth as long as we're not fighting any more injuries or anything like that. As The more we get these kids together, the more consistent we can be. Yes. Now, this is going to be the last game until we go into our bye week next week. So far, how can you sum up the, the season that, that the Lockhart Lions have had so far? You know, not, not counting this game as a win, but right up until this point. Well, and up through the first four games, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's a game of inches. You know, we're 2-2, two and two, could easily be 4-0. and oh. I mean, you go back to Taylor and, and, and that tight ball game there. I mean, we're, we're five points away from being undefeated. And so... Uh, what I, I guess I would classify it as uh, learning opportunities. Uh, the kids have really done a good job of rebounding from those situations and not, not letting one week affect the next, at least not in a negative way. Yes, most definitely. All right, Coach, well, let me go and let you go. Thanks for stopping by and uh, talking with us. And uh, just come out with a victory and head on home safe and sound. Yes, sir. Go Lions. Right. Definitely. All right, once again, this is Emilio Sarge Waters, and uh, this was your Christ Market Coaches Corner with Coach Herman. All right, and there it was, the Christ Market Coaches Corner with Coach Brian Herman of the Lockhart Lions. And Lockhart has already gone back into their locker room, and the Lions already aired up. The Minutemen uh, uh, helmet is aired up. And, uh, Scott, what, what, what were your thoughts about Coach Herman? Well, you know, I, I, I agreed. I, I was thoroughly impressed with Jackie Edwards, Jr. This kid's just a sophomore, and he had the poise last week of a senior. Uh, his throws, like he said, he made it to where only we were going to catch it or nobody was going to catch it. When you have a sophomore that can do that and all the nerves of playing at home in front of your parents for the first time, yes. I could tell Dad was excited because I was watching Dad down in the stands. That had to be nerve-wracking for him. And uh, he, he did great. I think he maybe made two mistakes that I saw the whole night. So I was very pleased with him. But, yeah, I agree. We were just kind of out of sorts, and uh, and I really think that we're going to turn things around and have a pretty good night tonight. So kind of going on with what we normally do, last week uh, I was having some insulin reaction issues, and we didn't get down to the field to interview any of the players, so I made that up for it tonight. And uh, I interviewed a few of the guys, and I'm going to go just in order as I got them. But first of all, we're going to start with uh, several of the guys that play basketball that have come out for the first time to play football and have done a great job. First one is Cortland Zambrano. Love this kid to death. What a great basketball player. Doing a great job on the football field. And I'm going to set him up here for his interview. And this is what Cortland had to say in his interview. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAC Sports, through Vibe Magazine, and I'm here with Cortland Zambrano, another one of those basketball players that has turned football. Um, Cortland, it's been a while since you played football. What are you thinking of the season so far? Uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're playing great. We, sh we should go all the way, I feel. But we have a lot of stuff to get through, and uh, it's, it's good being back on the field and uh, knowing I can be a key to the football team, and it's, it's great. Awesome, very good. So the second question is, you going into every game, what is what is your personal goals tonight in tonight's game? What do you want to accomplish? Well, uh, my personal goals is always being a great teammate. You know, I always want to be the one that work hard on the field. We always want to push these guys to do better. So every play, every down, it's something we got to get better, at, and I like that. Great. And again, I can speak from knowing this kid throughout basketball. He is a good team player and he works his can off. So I appreciate him for that. My last question is the easiest question in the world. Who do you want to give a shout out to tonight? Uh, I want to give a shout out to my family and, I'll, and my girlfriend Star. I love you. And thank you very, for being there for supporting me. All right. This is Corlin Zambrano, a senior D-back, kick and punt returner. You have a great game tonight and it was a nice interview in you. Thank you. Here, baby. All right, so that was Cortland Zambrano. Now we're going to go with, uh, he's not new to Lockhart, but he's kind of new this year. He's back with us, and he's having a great season. And that's senior running back, Jesus Aldana. And we're going to give him an interview now. 
This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. I'm here with Jesus Aldana, who's a new running back in our backfield and has been tearing it up this year. Jesus, what's it like playing in Lockhart and getting to touch the ball as much as you have? It's pretty awesome. Um, well, I'm not really new to uh, the to Lockhart in itself. I've been here for a while. I just came back recently, but um, I'm enjoying the feeling of being with my team again and um, really making history out here. That sounds great. You've been lighting it up with the yardage and doing a great job, and that pass down the field wasn't too bad either. So now we'll go to the next question. You're coming into a game tonight. What is your personal goals? What do you want to accomplish tonight? I want to uh, set a tone, uh, make a statement. We're not the same old Lockhart and to um, bring home a W. Very good. Now, last one's the easy one. Who would you like to give a shout-out to tonight, sir? Um, first of all, God and himself, my mom, and then my teammates, because without them, we couldn't get anywhere, especially linemen. Very good, and that's a good to mention the linemen because they have done a great job for you folks in the backfield. So, again, Jesus, thank you very much for your time, and I want to wish you good luck. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, that was Jesus Aldana, and good uh, interview there, talking about his lineman. Now we're going to go to yet another basketball player. Adam Romero is the starting point guard for the basketball team, and here's now a de defensive back and a receiver for Lockhart. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. And I'm here with Adam Romero, who usually you'll see as a point guard on the basketball team, but has played, first time he's played football since middle school, and he's doing quite a good job here in his, his senior campaign. So, Adam, haven't played football in a while. What are your thoughts about football? How, are you enjoying it? What's going on with you? Um, uh, I've, I've, I've been enjoying the time that I've been playing football. I mean, I missed the game because I haven't been playing in like three years, three, four years. So I'm just glad to be back on the field. Very good. And you've got a pick six. You've got a great touchdown. You've made some miraculous catches this year. Um, you know, as far as tonight's game, um, what are your goals when you come into a game? What are you trying to achieve tonight? Um, I'm trying to get like an interception and a couple of receptions and just trying to keep their offense down to like 14 points or less. That's great. And the last one, it's the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout out to? Uh, I just want to shout out my Coach Mack because he supported me through the transition of playing from basketball to football. And he's been there for me, you know, so I appreciate him. All right, well, that, that, that was Adam Romero with Devin Clark coming in on him. But that's Adam Romero. Hey, Adam, good luck tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was Adam Romero. Again, he's the starting point guard. Uh, and uh, now he's turning, th turning heads here in the football and doing a great job for us. Here's the last guy, last week's offensive player of the game, Detron Ellison. And here's what Detron had to say about football for tonight. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. I'm here with the offensive player of the game last week, Daytron Ellison, a junior running back and defensive back. Not only will he smack you on the floor in defense, but he'll jump over you on offense. Daytron, what did you think of your game last week? I think I did pretty well. This game, I'm trying to go in with a better attitude and take home the dub. That sounds wonderful, and I'm sure that Coach will want to see you running around people like you did last week. Now, as far as you know, tonight's game, you said you want to get the W, but um, what are your personal goals in this game? Is there, like, for instance, your brother was telling me, you know, he wanted X amount of touchdowns in, in his game. I interviewed him. Is there any special goals you have for tonight's game? Make less mistakes. Very good. My last one's always the easiest one. Who do you want to give a shout out to? My grandma and grandpa, my brothers and sisters, and my mom and dad. All right. Well, again, this is junior running back Detron Ellison, last week's offensive player of the game for Lion Country Broadcast Network. Detron, good luck tonight, and we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was Detron Ellison. We're getting ready to go to the national anthem, so we're going to take a break here and listen in. <laughs> Told that they're not doing the national anthem yet, so we're going to go ahead and uh, – we're going to stay with what we're doing here. So we heard all the players talk. We heard the coach talk. And uh, real quickly, I'm going to run through uh, San Antonio Memorial guys to watch out for. We kind of heard coach talk about them. Uh, they talked about um, Cesar Flores. He's a quarterback for them. He's the senior. They also go with a Joel Lozano. It sounds like they kind of platoon those guys in and out a little bit. Talked a little bit about um, 
the linebacker Jose Perez, and he's a he's a big specimen, uh, kind of a daunting looking. They had uh, Gabe Castillo, an offensive lineman and a defensive end. Coach talked about the defensive yes. ends, uh, and then they had their running back Zach Iowa, and he's actually their go-to guy in the backfield. So hopefully, I'm not butchering that last name too badly, <laughs> but that's the way we we went with the pronouncing on that, and. Um, that's kind of the people we got to watch out for, according to Coach. On the other side of the ball, like we talked about, players of the game. We had Luke, uh, Luis Torres last week. This kid, we, we don't call his name much, but last week he had a tremendous game on the defensive side of the ball. He's a senior linebacker. He was our defensive player of the game. We had Daytron Ellison, as we said before, was the offensive player of the game. Of course, you know the, the dynamic duo, and De Daquan Ellison. And then we talked a little bit about having uh, our sophomore quarterback in there and how well he did. The usual names, though, names you hear all the time. Eddie Tukar, the guy is just the heart and soul of our team on defense. Yeah, he definitely is. Eliza Sanchez, another name that we called a lot last week was Aiden Hernandez. Uh, Aiden has done a great job for us this year. Uh, you got Jaime Guerrera on the line. You got Alex Sosa, who's kind of now turned into that backup quarterback and linebacker, and he had some hits last week. Matter of fact, Mama puts a, a picture of one of his hits on Facebook, <laughs> and that was a nice stick. I liked that one. And we talked a little bit about Jesus Saldana. Again, things that the teams have done coming into tonight, uh, it for – Memorial, it was they won their game against Bandera 21 to 6. They turned around and lost to Burbank 20 to nothing. They lost to Southside 35 to nothing. And then last week in district play, they lost to Uvalde 41 to 7. On the other side, for us, uh, we beat Travis, as we all know, 54 to 7 at home. We turned around the next week and lost in a nail biter 29 to 30 to, to Taylor High School. Turned around the next week and beat Burnett High School 23-21. And then we had the dog fight last week with Medina Valley coming up on a short end, 19-23. And so we're 2-2 two and two overall, 0-1 oh in district play. They're 1-3 and three overall, 0-1 oh in one district play. And one, one last time I want to – it's not the last time. I'm going to give a shout-out to our QA, Pepe Lugo. He's uh, listening to us tonight, making sure everything's going okay. And according to him right now, everything's sounding fine. And um, – Time to get away from what I talk about. We're going to go back to the Sarge and let him kind of give some more thoughts on what's going on. He's also going to give maybe, you know, the games tonight and who else is playing in our district play. Yes, definitely. And you talked about the three-headed monster, as Coach Herman uh, called him last week, Daytron Ellison, Daquan Ellison, and Jesus Aldana. So far on the season, Daquan Ellison, who's going to be playing in his third game, he's already totaled up 143 yards on 22 carries. And Daquan Daquan Ellison, who was leading the the central lead, the the leading rusher for Central Texas in the Austin area, has uh, 592 yards on 79 carries, while Jesus Aldana has 316 yards on 42 carries. Da Daquan Ellison comes in with eight total touchdowns on the season, followed by his brother Daytron with three, and Jesus Aldana with one. And uh, as a total team, Lockhart comes into tonight's contest unofficially with 1,237 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 yards a carry on 185 carries total for as a team. So it's going to be a, a, an exciting game as, you know, as the Lockhart Lions have to win this one. But the only way they're going to be able to get to, to have a chance in this one is they got to have all three running backs clicking on all cylinders, which means that offensive line, has to block like they did in the first game of the season against Travis. It doesn't matter who's running the ball. They got to execute up front, push their defenders, wear them down, and uh, this should come out a win for the Lockhart Lions if they follow that game plan. Defensively, we've talked about it. This is one of the quickest defenses that I've seen in my time since I got back from Kuwait, and, most de and uh, by far the most physical team when it comes down to tackling is – when these Lions come in and make a tackle, they don't just lay you down. They come in and they're making hits and they're 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 putting the players down on their backs, and uh, they're doing it just about in every play. And you know it takes its toll on the offense, especially if you're the receiver, the running back that's getting hit every time with the physicality that these Lions are coming in with. So it's going to be interesting to see how both sides of the ball play out for us tonight. It's uh, great to see the basketball players come on out here and. 
and the huge impact that they've shown on the defense side of the ball. So it's going to be a great game tonight. Lockhart Lions versus the Memorial Minutemen. And uh, I'm excited. Game time is about three minutes and 30 seconds away. Lions just ran onto the field and uh, waiting on Memorial to come out and get ready for the national anthem and then the kickoff. Well, and as he's, you know, it's a beautiful night. I mean, the, the flags aren't blowing very much. This is the first time in three weeks that we haven't had to worry about lightning and rain, which is nice. Yeah. Um, as I said before, it's, you know, kind of hoping my dad's listening and getting to hear this tonight as he's been through something pretty pretty traumatic, and that's good, good to have him back and listening. And, and uh, it brought my son down here from Kansas. He made an, an overnight trip just to come down and see his grandfather, so that was nice to have him in here. And uh, as we said, Memorial's getting ready to come out of their – their little memorial helmet and then we're going to go to the national anthem and then we're going to be ready to get going so we're going to take a break real quick all right you're listening to lion country broadcast network and kmax sports with five magazine let first lockhart national bank reward you with first star rewards checking where you earn on your rewards checking balance get free atm refunds nationwide plus so much more come on by one of our locations in lockhart kyle or south austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today you can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com all right we're back here at edgewood veteran stadium in san antonio again i'm looking around and I'm, I'm hoping that rain that they're talking about is going to stay away from this football game. Uh, this stadium is shared by two football teams. We'll be back here in about three weeks to play the other one. Yeah. And um, so we'll get to know San Antonio well. I can already tell you right now, <laughs> this press box is really nice. They have a good setup here. Um, beautiful field, good conditions. I think we're going to have a great football game tonight. Yes, definitely. And it's, it's probably going to be a fast game. You know, is San Antonio Memorial come out? They're, they're gunslingers also. It's going to be a huge test for their quarterback because this is probably the first time that Lockhart and Memorial has played in the last two years because Memorial and Lockhart were in the same district three years ago. So it's going to be a good match tonight, and whoever comes out on top takes one step closer to hope, hopefully making into, make it into the playoffs. All right, well, we're getting really close to the National Anthem time here, so I think we're going to assume the positions and wait for that to take place. Gentlemen, in honor of our flag and our country, please rise for the presentation of the colors of the flag of our National Anthem. Colors are being presented tonight by the Junior Artist Color Guard of Memorial High School. Representing the Color Guard tonight is Cadet Major Ryan Lida. Cadet Captain Vincent Belize, Cadet Captain Victor Rosales, and Cadet Command Sergeant Major La Rocha. RTC unit is under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Ricky Kyle and Sergeant First Class Jim Scott.
All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium in San Antonio where we're getting ready to have a kickoff here for a high school football game, which is District 14, Class 5A, Division 2. And one thing I do want to say about this stadium, we're in the same build or room with the guys that have the school board going, and this school board is fantastic. We need to find somebody to get us one of these things. This thing's nice, and we get to be in, the, in, the, in there with the guys that are, have the music going on and everything else. What they don't know is the next time we come here is they're going to bring us food so we can <laughs> eat, and, um, and that's what we're going with there. But I know that we've got some things going on here, so we're going to go ahead and let Emilio take it home. Yes, definitely. As we continue on with the First Lockhart National Bank pregame show, as we're getting ready for the coin toss for the Memorial Minutemen, the captains for tonight's contest is number one, Cesar Flores, senior quarterback. Number 10, Jose Perez, senior defensive end. Number 70, Fermin Cruz, junior offensive lineman. And number 72, Benico Gallardo, senior offensive lineman. As for the Lockhart Lions, we got number 35, Alex Sosa. Number 80, Spencer Nelson. Well, number 42, Darius Spruill. We got one more out there, and I'll catch him as he turns around. Number 19, Kevin Lampkin. Those are the captains for the Lockhart Lions and the Memorial Minutemen as they're uh, flipping the coin. And let's go ahead and just set Lockhart Lions up to receive, <laughs> to kick the first, to kick off and to receive the second half. And that's, that's it. Exactly yeah, that's it. it. Back on track for the Lockhart Lions. Well, you know, and the guys in here <coughs> that, like I said, do the sound system and everything else they were talking about. Jose Perez, number 10. This guy's big. He's a tall specimen. And as my son said, he's got some meat on him. He's a strong kid. <laughs> Most definitely. And, you know, uh, Lockhart Lions, as you're listening to the broadcast tonight, if you could picture the field, Lockhart's going to be going from left to right as Memorial Miniman will be going right to left. And, uh... We're just seconds away from kickoff as uh, both special teams are huddling up, getting their final instructions before heading out to the field. And uh, Hey, McKelty. So what do you think? How, how do you think we're going to do tonight? I think we're going to do good. Awesome. See, we're getting McKelty to talk. That's, that's something new here this year. She's doing a good job for us, and she's breaking tanking us into commercials and stuff and but she doesn't know this yet but before the season's over she's gonna start doing play by play um, that's a must that is a must she should have read it in her contract before she came up here not to mention if she <laughs> wants to gra graduate high school yeah. it, to pass that class she's got to do that so <laughs> it looks like the usual culprit's going to be kicking off and uh that being number 49 eduardo ponce again this guy's got legs like tree trunks and he usually just takes maybe two steps and usually puts it near the end zone. I don't think we're going to see an onside kick to start the game, but he's really good at that as well. Now back deep for Memorial is uh, number five, Roland Carizales, and Al Alan Hernandez. There's the kick, and it's going to bounce into the end zone, and it's going to die back there for a touchback. So when we come back with... The first quarter, it'll be first and 10 for Memorial at their own 25-yard line. Devin Clark, as he jumped in on Adam Romero's end of his interview, I don't think we heard him, but he was in there messing around. He's our 6'5 safety. He's the center for the basketball team. He can dunk. He can do it all. The kid's just a great athlete. Adam Romero, the guy we interviewed, is near side. They're going with two receivers to the right, two to the left, single back in the backfield, shotgun formation. This is Flores back there. He's going to hand it right up the middle, and it's a nice run up the middle for about two, maybe three yards. Good job there by the Lockhart Lions. Yes, great pressure up front to realize the draw or the quick handoff up the middle and Great stop up in the middle. Once again, Alex Sosa in the mix as well as uh, number 50, 
three, Jose Ramon. Hernandez. Oh, Adam Romero tried to get there for the interception as they were going to real quickly throw it out to number 15, uh, Carlos Urdialis, and he, he, Adam was all over him. He might even have been there early enough to get a flag, but nothing was called, so it's going to make it third and seven. Yeah, and for not playing football in the last three years, great job by Adam Romero to knock the ball down and not get a pass interference. Two receivers to the right, two to the left, and it looks like the running back for them right now is Zaragoza. Oh, that's number two. I checked that. That's Hernandez. They're going to come out throwing again, and it's thrown in the ground. So it was Flores was out there looking for his receiver. He threw it behind him and on the ground. It's going to make it fourth and seven. So just like that, it's three and out, and out to punt is going to be number ten. And that is the guy we were talking about, Jose Perez. We watched him before the game. He's got a strong leg, so we better be ready to return this. And it looks like Adam Romero is yes, now the player. Adam Romero is back there. And great defensive stop for the Lockhart Lions. Three and out. Only 30 seconds taken off the clock. Just about blocked it. Ball hits the ground. And it's going to roll out of bounds. And it looks like we're going to get it at about the 34-yard line. So that's exactly where we'll start. With 11.22 to go here in the first quarter, it'll be first and 10 for the Lockhart Lions, their own 34-yard line. We're going to take a commercial break real quick. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Vibe Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted Best Chiropractor and Best Chiropractor's Office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here, and they were already pointing at Daquan Ellison, and they went right to Daquan Ellison, who's going to pick up about six yards on his first carry, even though they were pointing him out. I mean, the whole line was pointing at number 21. He still managed to get six, maybe seven yards on his first carry. Yes, definitely. Seven-yard pickup, and as you mentioned, they were pointing right at him, and for him to still pick up seven yards, great job by the offensive line to push their blockers back for, uh, da uh, for Daquan Ellison to pick up seven on the run. Pavel Rivera brings in the play, the slot T-type formation. Edwards under the center, gives it to Aldania around the left side. He's going to get the first down with a nice run. He's going to pick up close to five yards on the carry, move the sticks. Yes, yeah, ball is going to be placed down at the 48-yard line where he does pick up seven yards and a, fir and a first down. It almost looked like Jose Aldania could have bounced it out to the outside as nobody was out there. And I'm pretty sure the coaching staff has taken a, look, taken a look at that, and I could almost guarantee this ball might be going to Jesus Aldana around the outside on the same play. Tight formation again. Edwards, the sophomore under center. He's going to give it to Daytron Ellison around the right side. Daytron Ellison fumbles, but Cortland Zambrano's there to recover the fumble. It's going to be close to a first down. Detron needs to protect that ball, though. He was carrying it like a loaf of bread, and he tried to hurdle again, and he fumbled the ball. Yes, yeah, just as he was about to hit the ground, the ball came right out of his grasp, and uh, fortunately enough, the Lockhart Lions were able to cover the ball, recover it, and uh, picked up a nice nine-yard gain out of it, where it's going to be second down and one. 9.45 to go first quarter, still 0-0. Edwards with it, hands it off up the middle. And they are all over Daquan this time. He's getting nothing. He did not get the first down. He's might even – nope, it's right at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be third and one. Yes, they definitely had Daquan Ellison's number right there as uh, Memorial was able to get there and stop Daquan Ellison. Almost had him for a loss of yardage, but Daquan was able, able, was able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So I want to give a shout-out to Kevin Mills. He's listening to us, one of the board members of Lion Country Broadcast Network. We're going to come back up to the line of scrimmage. Third and one. Big play here for Lockhart early on. Need to move the ball. Right up the middle, Daquan Ellison. He gets the first down. He battles forward. He's inside the 40, down to about the 39-yard line. Move the sticks, first and 10. Strong run by Daquan Ellison, who was hit right about the first, yard, first down marker and was able to get around through a couple of blockers, pinball in and out of some tackles, and was dropped. Was finally dropped after about a three-yard game, but more than enough to get a first down. So the JV for Lockhart Lady Lions, they won the first game 25-14 to over LBJ in the JV game. They win the second one 25-21. 
Here comes Lockhart. Edwards going to roll out right. He's looking down, right down the He's middle. He's got Corlin Zambrano, and he just drops it. I think Moya got in his way, or he'd have made yes. that catch. Yes, definitely. Uh, Jackie Edwards threw it to the open receiver. It just so happened that Richard Moya was running the same route in an opposite direction, and they met right around the same time, and incomplete pass, but it, w it was a perfectly thrown pass, just a little bit miscommunication on the passing route. So it's second to 10, 8.31 to go here in the first quarter. No score. As we said before, Memorial was three and out. Lockhart's moving the ball. The, the running game's looking good, but Edwards showing he's got an arm to pass. Daquan Ellison up the middle. He gets stacked up. What a hit by number 44, Nathan Palacio. What a great defensive play there. He gains one yard. It's going to make it third and nine. Definitely. Lockhart's going to need something huge on this play to make it fourth down and manageable because, you know, this is four down ter territory for the Lockhart Lions. Well, and, uh, you know, I'm not a gambling man, but I'm almost going to say Detron Ellison around the, around the, with the end around kind of thing that we do there. Yes. Uh, he holds on to that ball. Detron's going to get some yards, and if somebody gets in his way, he'll just jump over the top of him and try <laughs> to get the first down. Tight formation still. They're going to give it to Detron Ellison. Here he comes around the right side. He's not going to get the first down, but like – Emilio said it's manageable now. So a good carry by uh, Daytron Ellison. It's going to pick up four on the gain right there, and it's going to be fourth down and five. I may need to buy a lottery ticket again because I, <laughs> I called the play. So <laughs> it's it's. But the thing is, Jackie Edwards is so good with the fakes that he's messing me up. I yeah. mean, I, that's what I hate about slot T is by the time we actually figure out who's got the ball, they're ten yards down the field. They do a great job disguising the offense. So fourth down, five yards. They're going to pass again. He's in trouble. He throws it. Detron oh, Ellison dives for it and can't make the play. They'll turn the ball over on downs. Memorial will get it first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. We're going to take a real quick commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Vibe Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Well, Memorial starts out with two receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll hand it up the middle. That goes to Tony Hernandez, who gets about four yards on the carry. They're quickly going to set up and go again. It is now second and about six. It looks like we got a receiver on each side. Actually, two receivers on the right, one on the left. Shotgun formation with Flores. They got an H back up there, and they have Hernandez back there beside him. They're going to hand it off to Hernandez. Nope. Flores keeps it. He cups up the middle with a little, little draw there. The quarterback, Reed, he's real close to the first down. Uh, they're going to give him the first yep. down. So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Memorial Minutemen at their own 44. So uh, uh, Cesar Flores does a great job with that quarterback, Reed, as he held on to the ball as long as he could, kept it, and made the first down. They're looking, showing blitz. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They have the H back. Hernandez in the backfield with Flores. This time it's Hernandez up the middle. He's going to gain about two before he's brought down. And it looks like big number 75, Faustino Gonzalez, was in there on the tackle. Yes, another hard-hitting tackle by the Lockhart Lions, as we spoke before. The, the physicality of the Lockhart Lions defense is brutal, especially as the game goes on. So... They're looking to the sidelines for a play. Again, they're just going with the same set basically every time. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They still have their H back to the right. Hernandez moves to the right. Shotgun formation. Quick pass, and he the guy turned the wrong way. He was intending that one for Ronaldo Resendez, and he just turned out when the ball was thrown on the inside, making it third and long. Yes, definitely. Fortunate enough for the, local, for the Memorial quarterback, he didn't throw it into a Lockhart Lions' hands as uh, we had a lion right there, but just didn't throw it in the right spot, either a miscommunication or route. So we have two to the left, one to the right. They're going to stop, look at their coach for the signs as they have players holding up big old poster boards. There's, they're looking to blitz. They're going to change the set again. 
So that blitz is kind of making him change plays up there. Down to seven on the clock. Looking to throw. He's going to go over the middle and hits his receiver. And he's still on his feet. He's down to about the 36. There's a fumble. fumble. Lockhart returns it, and it's the man we talked about before the game. Alex Thompson returns. The, uh, that's what his second or third fumble recovery this year. So that, it was a great catch. Yeah, nice great catch run. and run. Great throw by the quarterback. But as too. Emilio said, the hit was so hard it jarred the ball, ball loose. And then Alex Thompson, it's just like in basketball. Wherever that ball is, he seems to be. And that's, I believe, his second or third fumble recovery of the year. So here comes the offense of Lockhart, first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. 5.20 to go here in the first quarter. No score. It's just kind of been back and forth. Nobody really dominating the game just yet. Yes, definitely. Lockhart had an eight-play drive in that on their first drive, but gave you know gave the ball over on turn you know on a turnover on down. So hopefully they can keep the ball and put it in the end zone. Well, they got the ball to De I believe that was Dequan, but he didn't get anywhere. They had Cortland Zambrano out on the left. It was the first time they split a receiver out. Looks like we're going to lose a yard on that carry. Daquan Ellison loses a yard, but we taught, we said he's the Barry Sanders of our football team. He may lose a yard here and there, but then he's going to pop one for 80 on you, and then you're going to wish you yes. probably would have made a better tackle. Yeah, definitely. And the thing about that is we got three running backs that could pop one for 80. So That's <laughs> exactly. And a quarterback yeah. that could do the same. So tight formation this time. They're going to give it to Detron around the right side. They were ready that time. And what a play by a number tackle. eight. That was Joe Lozano, the backup quarterback. He upended Detron on that tackle. No gain. So 430 and counting here in the first quarter. Still no score. He has to have a great tackle on the outside to keep Daquan, Detron Ellison from getting any further. It almost seemed like if Detron could have came around a little bit further towards our side, He'd have had a wide open shot all the way into the end zone, but great tackle. Well, you know, you've made that comment twice now, and usually we do break those around the outside, so I'm kind of wondering what's going on. So they give the ball up the middle to Quan Ellis, and he's still running on his feet. He's still on his feet, and he's out close to a first down. He's I'll out tell to you what, he's, they're going to give him a first down. That What a run. 49, out to the 49 on that. He was stepping over people, dragging people. And again, guys, soaking wet, he might weigh 140 pounds. First and 10 from the 49. What a great run by Daquan Ellison. Tell he's you, our yeah, fullback. That was a 12-yard run right there. And I guarantee you, out of those 12 yards, 10 of those came off of his legs and his determination to get that ball across that first down marker. So David Salero, the center, will bring him to the line in a tight formation again. He's going to roll out right. That is Jackie Edwards looking. He throws the ball just out of the reach of Datron Ellison. He needs to set his feet when he's throwing. He's still throwing on the, on the run, and yes. he's, he's throwing it too wild. He Definitely. needs to set his feet. And right there, Datron Ellison, you know, great run pattern he ran, but he stopped running as he made the cut towards the sideline. If he keeps running towards the sideline, Jackie Edwards makes that reception right there, and uh, Lockhart Lions are looking at another first down. I'm glad to see that we're going to throw the ball this year because we're throwing the ball a lot more than we ever have in the past three years. So tight formation. They're going to go to Aldania. He's going to run it, showing his strength. Got the first down and more. Down to the 34-yard line. Aldania, just like Emilio said, Aldania is showing his presence early. You know, that's one thing Lockhart did last week against Medina Valley. Jesus Aldania and Daytron Ellison, was, you know, Medina Valley got a good dose of them too. But then they start, you know, they got away from it and, they, they were able to hold off Daquan and Al Jesus Aldana. Today, they're doing an excellent job moving the ball around between the three-headed monster backfield and getting down the field, making first downs. So they've got uh, Daytron Ellison and Alex Thompson wide left. Oh, bad snap. Aldana at the middle. He's going to get a good gain, though. Even though it was a bad snap, he's able to hand it off. Made a great play. Aldonia picks up about three. It's going to get it down to about the 33-yard line, 245 to go here in the first quarter. Yes, three yards on a busted play like that on a bad snap, that's, that's, that's a good play right there. Actually, any yardage after a bad snap is, good, is a good play. So to pick up three yards the way Jesus Aldonia did, and it was a tough three yards, is a big plus for the Lockhart Lions. Not only that, it's second and seven on a team that averages six yards a carry. Devin Clark's in the game. They're going to give it to Daytron Ellison around the left side. He cuts it up the middle. He's down to the 30, or down inside of the 30. He's down inside the 25. First down, Lockhart. 
like with Daquan before, mm -hmm. Daytron Ellison's legs got him this first down. Yes, definitely. The offensive line is definitely doing their job at the line of scrimmage. But uh, Daytron Ellison with this with this uh, jukes and jives almost had uh, – it's almost like if I had a controller in my hand and spin, spin them around. Great run by Daytron Ellison. After he got past the line of scrimmage, it was all him all the way across the first down marker. And it's first down and 10 for the Lockhart Lions at the 24-yard line. So there's 2-12 to go here in the first qu first quarter. Have any of the other games gone on or started, or how, how are they looking in the rest of the district play? Okay, for the Meitler Storage ga game break, we have uh, Bernie Champion playing at Medina Valley. Medina Valley's up 7 to nothing with 4.53 left to go in the first quarter. At Alamo Heights, Uvalde is visiting Alamo Heights. Alamo Heights is winning 6 to nothing with 10-10 left in the first quarter. At Tyvee, it is Kennedy, zero. Tyvee Antlers, 14. And right here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium is Lockhart Lions, zero. Memorial Minutemen, zero. But Lockhart Lions going to be knocking on the door here in about four yards as they're first down and 10 at the 24-yard line in, Minute, in uh, Minutemen territory. So Bernie Champion must be meeting that big Larry Zonka of a running back from Medina Valley. Yes. That score surprises me. It is. Two receivers to the right. They're going to go straight up the middle with Daquan. Daquan's trying to bounce it outside. He does. He slips it. He's to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Daquan Ellison from 24 yards out. First score of the game, sixth and at the Lockhart with 2.05 to go. No penalty flags out there once again. The line get, does their job at the line of scrimmage. And as soon as Daquan got past the line of scrimmage, it was all him. He had sidestepped a couple of defenders and broke free, got into the end zone, 24-yard touchdown, Lockhart line six, Minutemen zero with 2.05 left to go here in the first quarter. Now, who is that kicking? Cause is that James? I can't tell. We do, we do know that we have number 35, Alex Sosa, holding. That is James, I believe, kicking. Yes. Yes, it's Thomas. The snap is back. Hold is down. The kick is up. And it is good. So with that, with 2.05 left to go here in the first quarter, it's Lockhart Line 7, Memorial Minutemen 0. And we'll take a quick break. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket. Well, it's seven to nothing. Your Lockhart Lions on top with 2:05 to go in the first quarter, and that pretty much was the determination of the two Ellison brothers and Aldonio's strength in running. The three-headed monster just showed their prowess in that drive, and it's now seven to nothing. We'll see what uh, we're able to do with Ponce on the kickoff. Here is the last time he kicked off; they didn't even get a chance to return it. Yes, definitely. And you know that drive took seven plays, three three minutes, 15 seconds off the clock. And between the three-headed monster of Aldania, Daquan, and Daytron, they all totaled seven carries for 62 yards. So that'll be, as I said, Ponce kicking off. Want to give a quick shout-out to Pepe Lugo, who's our QA tonight. Thank you, sir, for what you do. The kick is a little shorter this time. It's going to bounce at about the eight. Still gets into the end zone. And they'll down it there. It was number 14, Alan Hernandez. It was the sophomore that got on that one. So, again, 2.05 to go, first and 10 from the 25-yard line is where Memorial will start. Kind of shocked me a little as both return men just stand, stood back there and the ball slowly bounced into the end zone. Luckily for them, they were able to get, pick it up and kneel it down in the end zone because there was a lion on his heels ready to get out there and pounce on that football as it was still live. It's kind of hard to concentrate on the game with this scoreboard they have here. <laughs> I'm always watching all the bells and whistles that are going on over here. So here we go. Three receivers, trips to the right, single set in the backfield. They do have the H back in there. It is still Flores at quarterback, but they now have a different running back. This one is going to be it's Jose Galvan. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Number 21, Zachariah, the senior running back. Memorial is going to call their second time out of the half. And uh, it's still in the first quarter, so... Who knows? They might have just used the timeout that they'd probably need before going into halftime. Well, and, you know, we've always talked about how 
what our game plan is in the coin toss to win, win the toss to defer so that we can hopefully build a lead going into halftime and then in the second half we get the ball with the lead and try to add to it and maybe put the game out of reach yes definitely especially if the Lockhart Lions are down by that time their biggest strategy about kicking off to start the game is to score before halftime come out get the ball in the kickoff and go down and score again so we still have trips to the right nothing to the left they are always every time we show them a front they go and they look at the cards on the side and they've got pictures and everything. I don't know what they mean, but they do. Here's a real quick pitch out to the right side. Oh, what a play. Open field time. I don't know who made it, but it was awesome. That was Elijah Sanchez who got out there, and by the time the kid caught the ball, he was laying on the ground because of Elijah Sanchez on that. Yes, and he had a receiver up in front of him. That was a, like almost like a small wide receiver bubble screen right there. And he was able to get around that blocker and get to the receiver to make the tackle for a four-yard loss. Second and 14, 136 and counting to go here in the first quarter. They got two to the right, two to the left, and they're split wide here on the left. Adam Romero is asking for Devin Clark to come help. Two car looking to blitz. One back in the backfield. Flores is the quarterback in shotgun formation. Aiwe in the backfield. They're going to hand it off to him up the middle. Oh, great job there. And I did not see who met. That was Sanchez again. Two car and Sanchez on the Two tackle. Two car and Sanchez right there. Another vicious tackle right there between the for the Lockhart Lions, and he was able to pick up three yards on the game. But it was a powerful, it was a painful one at that. So twins to the right, twins to the left again. Shotgun formation. That looks like they're set. The shotgun formation. As we are under a minute left to go here in the first quarter. As. Emilio said it's going to be a quick game. Oh, here comes the blitz, and two car forces a fumble. They're running back to dive on it, and it's going to be inside the 10-yard line. Two car. Huge loss. Big play for the Lockhart Lions. It was big number 53, Angel Banderas, who was able to pounce on that football, or else Lockhart could have picked it up and brought it, took it into the end zone for six. So they're at their own nine-yard line, fourth and 26, 20 seconds basically to go here in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Lockhart. It was a huge 14-yard loss on that play, and it's going to be fourth down and very long. So we almost blocked his last punt. Yeah. Want to give a shout out to my beautiful wife Vanessa back at home. Thanks for listening, dear. They're looking for the plays. Uh, they're going to run the clock out, out. And that's going to be it for the first quarter. So. That will end your first quarter with the Lockhart Lions. are up seven to nothing, and. Going to be knocking on the door again here to start the second quarter. We're going to take a quick commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Wipe Magazine. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! Johnny and Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard. The highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain Body. We won't steer you wrong. All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Beautiful stadium, beautiful scoreboard. We are out here with the coolest guys you can be with here that run the board, run the music, and are buying us food the next time we come to town. All right, they're getting ready to punt. They're in a dangerous situation because the last time we just about blocked the punt, we have Adam Romero back to receive as well as Jared Galindo, both seniors. Adam Romero with great hands. The punt is kind of end over end. They're going to let it hit the ground. It takes a bounce, and they better be careful as it just about hit Devin, Devin Clark, Clark yes. in the back. That would have been <laughs> terrible for us. But fortunately, we had the bounce go our way. It looks like it will be first and 10 for Lockhart at the Memorial 34-yard line, 11.52 to go here in the first half. Lockhart Lions have very good field position. Balls at the 34-yard line at Memorial Territory. 
Tight formation. They're going to fake the handoff. Rolling out with Jackie. He's in trouble. He rolls around the right side. He's going to run. He gets to the outside, and he gets tripped up. Good defensive play, but not before he gains about four yards. Jackie Edwards is starting to look like somebody you better watch out for. Yes, definitely. He had a wide receiver wide open, but he was already in a full speed run, running at full speed, and you know to stop and make a throw like that would have been very would have been impossible. Great awareness by Jackie Jackie Edwards, a sophomore, to be able to make that decision, took the ball in and run, picks up four yards on the game. So Salero brings him up to the line of scrimmage, tight formation again. They're going to pitch it out to Aldonia on the left side. He's going to cut it up. What a great play by number 24 there. I'm going to get you a name for him. C.J. Cardenas with a great tackle. He read that perfectly. We did pick up yards. It's still manageable, but what a great defensive play. Definitely. Great defensive stop right there as they were able to stretch the line of scrimmage all the way towards the sideline. And Jesus Aldonia pretty much had nowhere to go. Still picked up two yards on the run, but great stop by the defensive lineman. Third and five, 11 10 to go here in the first half of play. Seven to nothing here, Lockhart Lions on top. Devin Clark, the 6 5 receiver, has checked into the game. They're going to get the handoff to Daquan Ellison. He cuts it up the middle. He's oh, oh, my God. He oh, hit off ended. I don't know who made the play, but it was a touchdown saving tackle. It definitely was. He got the first down, but he did a body flip, and he gets it down to the 19 yard line where it's going to be first and 10 for Lockhart. 10-yard run from Daquan Ellison. I don't see the patience while he's running in, in, in today's ball game so far, but he's able to still pick up yardage. You know, I'm, I'm still waiting for the patience to come out there because he could have still bounced it around around the outside where he had more open field to it. But great, great run by Daquan. Another law court line first down. Tight formation again. They're going to go to Daquan. Or Daquan. No, Daquan around the left side. He gets tripped up. And I'm going to, let's see, I want to say it's the same guy. Lee Guerrero, I think, is the guy that made both of those upending tackles. Uh, he was the one that made the tackle earlier that saved pretty much a touchdown when he tackled Daquan, Daytron Ellison out here in the open field on, on the last try. So it's second and eight. Ten minutes exactly to go here in the first half. Lockhart's knocking on the door. It looks like senior Spencer Nelson, not only is he a senior football player, but he's a goalkeeper for the soccer team in the wintertime. Another athletic individual. Tight formation again. They're going to give it to Aldana. He runs hard, and he gets hit hard, but he, he dives forward. He's going to be about a yard, maybe two shy of the first down. He's going to pick up five yards on the run, where the ball is going to be down at the 12-yard line. So third and three. So it's going to be third and three. and, and you know, It's a manageable third and three. Lockhart's, are at, Lockhart's averaging about eight, about seven yards a, 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 a run. So the, uh, Pavel Rivera brings in the play. I'm almost thinking they're going to go to Quan this time. But it would be nice to see him bounce one outside because they're really playing tight on us. They're going to give it to Aldonia, and he gets wrapped up and brought down, and Coach is not happy with the blocking up front. It's going to be short. Looks like it's going to be no fourth gain. and three, yep. no gain. The line really just kind of stood up and didn't push anybody on that one. That's not typical of our line. No, definitely not. And, you know, it showed in the last drive as a lot of those runs that Daquan and Daytron are running – the line's doing their job at the line of scrimmage, but it's not at the line of scrimmage where they need to do the job. It's three, four yards down the field is where they need to get their de their uh, their the defensive lineman back, and they're not doing that right now. All right, tw tight formation. They're going to pitch it out. It is Daytron Ellison. He's going to try to cut it up. He gets it inside the twenty, but he or inside the ten, but he is not going to make the first and ten. We're going to turn gonna it be, over on downs. Yeah, it's going to be real close. It's going to determine on the spot. Actually, it looks like they are going to maybe possibly look at it. It's a good it's a good spot for the Lockhart Lions. It's going to be real close. I did not think he got there, but the spot is very helpful for us. Even if we don't make it, though, it's, it's nice to have them pinned in deep. So, surely they're bringing the sticks out. Yep, here they come. One team's going to be very excited, the other one not so much. But it was a good defensive stand there. His memorial is really sticking it to us. Made some nice tackles so far tonight. Yes, they definitely have. And, 
you know, of course, they had that seven-play drive that ended in a touchdown for the Lockhart Lions. They made it. No, they did not make it. Oh, my goodness. Wait a, Wait a minute. Now they're acting like they did make it. So they're saying they made it. The way Memorial was acting, he was yeah. short, but they're saying he got it. So right. the move the sticks. Yeah, who, huge run by Daytron Ellison. I guess he got he got the yards that he needed. But like Coach Henry, Coach Herman said at the beginning, this game is a, is about inches. It is, and you know, an inch here, an inch there, and you don't make that first down. So they're going to give it to Daytron. He does not get around the side. What a great defensive stop there! My goodness. These guys have got Detron's number tonight. That was number 54, Jimmy Trevino, with a great tackle. So it's second and goal from the nine-yard line. Detron had no chance on that one. 7.55 to go here in the first half. 7 to nothing, Lockhart. They're knocking on the door. Well, they're going to get them right back at the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to be a gain of no nothing on that carry. So they're going to give it up. It's Daquan around the left side to the 10, to the 5. He gets grabbed down by the head, and he's inside the 5, and they're going to keep the clock moving. He's at the 4-yard line. It's third and goal. There's a penalty flag. Oh, there was a flag. I did not see the flag. I believe they called offsides on the defense. We can only hope. I thought Daquan was going to lose his head on that one. Nope, it's on us. Also, that's going to move this, move the ball back. Where it's going to be first down and go to go, or yeah, first second down second and go down. to go. We're at the, from the eighteen yep, yard eighteen line. yard line. So again, Lockhart shooting themselves in the foot. They do that every once in a while in these games. Tight formation. They're going to roll out right. Jackie Edwards looking to throw a lob in the end zone. It's Devin Clark, and he can't ah. come up with it. The pass was right there. He just couldn't come up with it. That's going to make it third and goal from the 18-yard line. Nice play by Jackie. Definitely. Beautiful pass also. Just a little bit, far you know, just over the outstretched arms of uh, David Clark. And at, seven, at six feet tall, you know, it, like Co Coach Herman said, it's a game of inches. That's the second pass that could have been a big play, but it was just over the top. Adam Romero. He's got the good hands out there. He's split out right. Probably looking at another throwing uh, situation here. They were going into round with Daytron Ellison. He gets to the 10, to the 5. Daytron Ellison with an 18-yard touchdown run around the left side with 7.08 to go here in the first half. It's 13 to nothing, your Lockhart Lions. Definitely. So the dynamic duo... Doing what they do best, each of them scoring a touchdown. Definitely. This was a 10-play drive. So these, they've had an 8-play drive, a 7-play drive, and a 10-play drive. And this is going to be something that's going to be wearing down on that Minutemen defense if uh, Lockhart Lions does get the ball back and get a chance to score right, be right before halftime. So James will be in the kick. Sosa with the hold. The kick is up. It looks good from here, and it is. So that will make it 14 to nothing with 7.08 to go here in the first half. Your Lockhart line's on top. We'll go ahead and run to a commercial break and come back for the kickoff. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports with Five Magazine. For over 15 years, Rain and Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Rain and Drywall and Paint today. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here in San Antonio. We're at the Edgewood Veterans Stadium. It's 14 to nothing. Your Lockhart Lions, 7 to go here in the first half. Rudy Cadillo just let me know that the girls in volleyball are now in their second half of district play where they are up 7-1 to one against LBJ. They're at LBJ tonight. The girls have only lost one district match in volleyball, and that was to Dripping Springs, and that was quite a match itself. Thank you, Rudy, for giving us the updates. 
We're ready to kick off now as Ponce will be setting up to kick. Again, the two to three step kick. It's going right in the middle of the field. It's going to bounce. They're going to field it this time. They're going to bring it out to the 15, to the 20. Around the corner, he's going to still be on his feet, and he's finally pushed out of bounds. Now let's see where they mark him. It looks like it's going to be around the 27-yard line, and it was Hernandez bringing the ball out on that kick return. Yes, that scoring drive for the Lockhart Lions took four minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. It was a 10-play drive that was capped off by an 18-yard touchdown by Daytron Ellison and with the extra point try good Lockhart lines up 14 to nothing with 702 left to go in the first half so they'll go with twin receivers to the right one receiver to the left there with their H back on the right side Flores in the backfield hey we're with it trying to get up the middle he gets wrapped up a great defensive play there and it again is number 75 Faustino Gonzalez who crashed down on him didn't give him much at all, maybe two yards. Elijah Sanchez was also in there in the tackle, but great stop by Faustino. So here we go. We got a single receiver to the right, twins to the left. H-back is on the left side. So it looks like every time they go twins to one side, the H-back goes to the same side. I am with it, up the middle. He's going to get some good yardage on this one. Out to about the 35-yard line. He's going to be just shy of the first down. A great job of the offensive line pushing him forward. Yes, definitely. They created a huge hole for the running back to get right up in there. And uh, Lions were able to stop him a yard shy of the first down. So here we go with the Twins to the left. Single receiver to the right. This time they totally went against what I just said as the H-back is on the single receiver side. Now he shifts over. Hand off up the middle. And he gets through. He's out to the 40, to the 44, where he's brought down there by Eliza Sh Sanchez. And they're going to get another first down against us. It was a zone read by the quarterback who was able to get some good yardage and pick up a first down for Memorial oh. Minutemen. So first and 10 from the 44 of Memorial. Two, re uh, two receivers on the right, one on the left. And this has pretty much been the strategy. Every once in a while, they'll run a trips to one side. But same old, same old. They're going to do the fake read this time. They hand it off to the running back up the middle, and he's getting big yardage on this one. A nice run. He's even going to get a first down. He's across the midfield stripe, down to about the 45-yard line of Lockhart. That was number 22, Roger Garza with the run. Big first down run for uh, Memorial Miniman and Garza. Is, they finally get back into line territory. So they got the twins to the right, single receiver to the left. Garza's on the left side of... It looks like Lozano's in the game now. So Gars is up the middle. He's going to fight for about four hard yards of rushing there. Nice quick hitter. But I had just realized that Lozano's now in the game instead of Flores. Yeah, great stop by Alex Sosa and Elijah Sanchez in there. And Elijah Sanchez getting his name called out there quite often so far. Yes, he is. Second and seven. 450 and counting. 14 to nothing. Your Lockhart Lions on top. Eddie Tukar looking like he might want to blitz. They're going to hand it straight up. Nope, it's a zone read, Lozano, but he gets tripped up. Great play there, and that's by Mr. Sosa. Alex Sosa, the captain, with a great tackle. And it's going to be third down and seven. It looks like third down and eight for the Memorial Minutemen, and they're, they're in desperate need of getting another first down or else they're going to be punting back to the Lockhart line with just under four minutes left to go in this first half. So they got two receivers to the left, one to the right. Lozano, the quarterback. Iowa in the backfield with him. Lozano takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He lets go of a bomb over the middle. Oh, what a great play. Great play by the quarterback. I think that was Tom. No, that was no, Adam, Adam Romero. Adam Romero, great play by Adam Romero to be out there and just reach his hand up there like he was getting ready to block a shot and knock that ball out of the air. Well, you had your, your your neighbor guy over there as Devin Clark came over the top to help him out in case he needed it. Makes it fourth and eight. 3.59 to go here in the first half. 14 to nothing. Your Lockhart Lions are on top. And it looks like Memorial is going to be going for it, too. I don't blame them. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Lozano in the backfield. They wait for the play. Awa in the backfield with him. He's got the up back on his left side this time, and then it looks like they're going to call their third and, and final, final timeout. timeout. 
Yes. 3.59 to go here in the first half. It's 14 to nothing. We'll take a commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Bright Magazine. Let the search for your next home, farm, or ranch begin with Kent Riddle. Kent Riddle is a real estate broker specializing in residential, farm, and ranch property sales and leasing. Finding your dream property begins with a call to Kent Riddle Real Estate at 512-801-9771. Kent Riddle Real Estate is a proud supporter of Lockhart Lion Athletics. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium with 3.59 to go here in the first half. It's 14 to nothing. Fourth down and eight. And we're all getting a little bit of a chuckle in here. It's okay, though. What happens in San Antonio stays in San Antonio. There you go. That's not good. So here we go, fourth and eight. Trips to the right. He's going to go one-on-one to number 14, and nice job there by Thompson. And number nine, Caleb Jennings. It's incomplete. But what was amazing was Alan Hernandez got up in the air and almost came down with that Yes, thing. he did. And <laughs> it would have been an amazing catch if he brought, came down with it. Of course, he hit the ground hard because of the, uh, because of the two defenders all, up, all on him. But it was a great pass only to where only his receiver can get it. Just wasn't able to bring it down. Well, and again, give a shout-out to our QA, Pepe Lugo, as he's with us for the first time with the Lockhart team, and we appreciate him and what he does. I keep seeing his messages here and there. It's first and ten for Lockhart from their own 43-yard line. Tight formation for the slot T. They're going to pitch it out. Daquan Ellison around the left side. He's across midfield down to about the 47-yard line. And we have a Daquan Ellison sighting as he got slowed down last week, but they're not slowing him down tonight. He's going to pick up nine yards where it'll be second down and one as they're back into Minutemen ter territory at the 48-yard line where it'll be third down and one. So 3.30 and counting here in the first half. It'd be nice to get another touchdown. They got Daytron Ellison and Devin Clark, the 6'5 receiver, on the left side. They're going to hand it off to Daquan around the right side. He's going to try to bounce it out. He does. He's up to the 45, to the 40, down to the 35, to the 30. Cuts it back, down to the 20. He gets inside the 20. Great run by Daquan Ellison. He's down to the 19-yard line. He had some tremendous speed to get around the outside. Stiff arms, the first defender that comes up to him, able to get around the outside, stays in bounds and picks up a huge, huge chunk of yards here as uh, we are getting ready to hit the three-minute mark here in the first half. So it would be huge to get in that end zone again, and Day or Daquan is trying to get us there. Tight formation this time. They're going to hand it off to Aldonia around the right side. Another great tackle. That one, I believe, was number six. Number six, Jimenez. Rene Jimenez. My Jimenez, goodness, yes. what a great tackle. Yes, the def defense for Memorial has made some, ex you know, some great open field tackles, and that was just another one right there. That saved a touchdown. As Adonia was going around the right side, he gained about five, maybe. Yeah, they're going to say it they're was five. They're going to say five. So it's going to be second down and five. Solero brings the team to the line. Jackie Edwards under center. He's going to give it to Daytron De Ellison, who runs it right up the middle, and he pretty much just runs untouched into the end zone. And that's another touchdown, and I believe that was a 16-yard variety for Daytron Ellison. So the Ellison brothers trying to outscore each other tonight, making it 20 to nothing. Actually, they're going to mark it a 14-yard touchdown run. You know, it, on an offense where Lockhart would like to would have liked to have chewed a lot of clock and scored just before going into halftime, they only had the ball for about a minute and 34 seconds, and was able to drive the ball 57 yards down the field, which was ca which is going to be capped off by a 14-yard touchdown run by Daytron Ellison, his third his second touchdown of the night. So we got a penalty flag. The snap was high. It went over Sosa's head. It's going to be Hamas, false start. Hamas picked it up, but they're going to call false start, and we'll do this again. Very fortunate for that to happen right there. Hamas was thinking, I'm going to get to run this football, and they stopped the play before it could even get started. As they moved the Lockhart Lions back five yards. Now, we've not seen a lot of distance kicking from our kickers, so this will be interesting to see how he does. Is this going to be a 25-yard field goal, so to speak? Hopefully we get a better snap this time. 
Snap is down by Sosa. The kick is going to be off the uh -oh. post. No good. So that will make it 20 to nothing with 2.20 to go here in the first half. <laughs> I do like this scoreboard <laughs> stuff. This is awesome. We need to get one of these things. I like that. But Lockhart only had a four-play drive on this one, but they were able to move the ball downfield, especially with off the off the legs off of uh, Daquan Ellison, who was able to pick up 15 and uh, another 21-yard run before Daytron, uh, De, uh, Jesus Aldani was able to pick up five to get the ball down to the 14 in Memorial Territory, and uh, Daytron was able to close it out by hitting a 14-yard touchdown run, which was practically run up the middle and might have been might have gone untouched. Very, very close to being untouched. I'm still waiting for that Rudy Cadillo update because last time we heard the Lady Lions were up 7-1 to one against LBJ. They had already beaten LBJ this year, and they're on their second half of district play. The girls have lost just one match this year, and that was – or one series this year, and that was against uh, Dripping Springs, and everybody loses to Dripping Springs, it seems like. So we'll be kicking off. It'll be Ponce kicking it off. And we'll see how this one turns out with 2.20 to go. A lot of work needs to be done by the Memorial Minutemen here in the first half. Yes, definitely. And after the kickoff, I'll give you a Meitler storage game break. As we got two minutes and 20 seconds left before we head into the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show. So there's a bouncing kick. It's going to be received. He's going to take it at the 15. He's running around the right side. He's up to the 20, to the 25, where he's taken down. And it looks like that was... Carrizales, who brought that one around, good pursuit, but a pretty good return as they'll get that one out to, and I'm still trying to find where the mark is. Looking like they'll mark it at the 27-yard line. So he gained a plus two out of that. Yes, definitely. And here's your Meitler Storage game break for the District 14 5A Division II roundup. It is Lockhart Lions here at Edgewood, Edgewood Veterans Stadium. It's 20 to nothing with 2-12 left to go here in the first half. With 5.45 left to go in the first half, it is Tyvee all over Kennedy, 38-0 to zero, as we get to this next play coming up. All right, they got twin receivers to the right. One's in motion, end around. No, he fakes it. He's looking to the same guy he faked it to, and he drops the football. He had uh, Resendez right there, and he dropped it trying to turn and make a cut, so it'll be incomplete second down. Yes, the other two games that are going on right now at Alamo Heights, it is Alamo Heights 27, Uvalde Coyotes 0, and at Medina Valley, it is Bernie Champion 7, Medina Valley 7, with 6.26 left to go in their, their first half. So it's, it looks like it's a barn. It's going to be a, a, ro a knock them knock down, sock them, rock and bot <laughs> kind of football game at Champion and Medina. They're going to throw on this one. They're look at, oh, it was thrown short. That was Lozano again. He was looking for the sophomore receiver, Hernandez. It falls short. It'll be third and 10. I got an update. I got, I got a, Rudy Cadillo um, corrected me on this. This is the first time they've played LBJ, and they're up 22 to 14 right now. Twin Good job, ladies. Twin receivers to each side. Lozano is the quarterback of choice right now. I didn't think uh, Flores was doing that bad of a job. No, definitely. It looked like he was controlling the offense and uh, running a lot smoother. So here comes the ball over the middle. It's incomplete. The closest receiver was our Alex Sosa, our middle linebacker. Now what do you do? You got fourth and ten. You definitely don't want to try and go for it and put the lines back in your own territory with 157 left to go. You know, Memorial is going to have to punt this ball and start to play field position and put the lines further back to hopefully they won't get into the end zone and run out this 157 left. So 24 to 15 is the score now. It looks like the Lions are knocking on the door. The Lady Lions, that is. Number 10, Jose Perez is back to punt. We've got Adam Romero and uh, Jared Galindo back. Galindo with it. He's at the 45. And because Adam Romero fair caught it or made the signal, I guess they're calling it a fair catch because yeah. I didn't see Galindo fair, uh, fair catch that. So they'll have first and 10 thrown 45-yard line. Rudy Cadillo says, and of course my phone turned off on me as soon as I read it, the girls won the first one, 25 to 15 over LBJ. Good job. The Lady Lions have been doing an, an outstanding job in volleyball this year, especially with Coach Both with them. 
And uh, they've only had one district loss against uh, Dripping Springs, who's an outstanding volleyball squad themselves. So great job to the Lady Lions and wish them the best <coughs> and continued success as the, senior, as the district season keeps going on for them. So now you've got to be careful here. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. If one of the Ellison boys breaks it around the corner, we, we are looking at a lopsided affair here. Jackie's looking to throw. He's going to go deep. Daytron Ellison trying to run it down. Jackie Edwards too strong on the throw. What an arm right there. Uh, yeah, this kid's a sophomore, and he just threw that about 50 yards in the air. And Detron's yeah. fast. It's hard to throw a ball past Detron Ellison. It is. It definitely is. Can you imagine what this kid's going to be like as a senior? My goodness. And, it, you know, it's, it's good experience that he's getting now. You know, feel bad for Jaden Garza, who was doing a great job as quarterback. But with the injury that he suffered, which we still don't know, but according to Coach Herman, you know, it's probably going to be a season ended for him. But Jackie Edwards is doing a great job ste stepping in his shoes. Daquan Ellison. Oh, no, that's Daytron up the middle. He bounced it down to the 45. He's inside the 45, down to about the 42-yard line. Another good run by Daytron Ellison. First and 10. They'll be quick to set up and try to get one more touchdown before the half. As we're right around the 131 minute, 30 seconds left here in the first half. We got Devin Clark, the 6'5 center or receiver out there on the right side. Nobody's on him. Nobody Nobody is, is on, on him. Holy mackerel. They throw to him. Oh, oh my throw. He overthrew him. That was the sophomore. Nobody right was there. on Devin Clark. If he just would have babied it out there, <laughs> it would have been a <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> but he overthrew him. He got a little excited because he was wide open. Nobody saw the 6'5 kid out there. Second and 10. I saw him. I did too. <laughs> I got excited. I thought we were going to have another touchdown. Jackie, a little bit too much spinach before the game. Tight formation here. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to throw again. He's got pressure on him. He's going to throw it on the run, and ain't nobody getting to that one. He's got to set his feet when he's throwing the football. That's why he's miss, miss throwing these passes. Yes, definitely. And then it, while he's going in the run, he's running towards where he's throwing, which is why he's making these overthrows right now. As, as, if the coach has got to get with him at halftime and say, hey, just settle your feet. You're doing good. Settle your feet before you make the throw, and he's, he's going to have a lot more completions once he gets that done. But as a sophomore, you expect things like that. Yeah. In the second, this is only his second start at the varsity level. So last year he was playing JV. Now he's in the varsity level. So, you know, it, there's still a lot of things that he got to work on, but he's doing a fantastic job so far. Third and ten. They're going to pitch it out to Daquan Ellison around the left side. He's going to get gummed up there. Doesn't get a whole lot of great hit there. That was number 20, Blaze Lara, what's on the tackle. What a hit. We get it down to about the 37-yard line, fourth down. I would just throw it up to Devin Clark and see what happens. Oh, yeah, fourth down. You got 43 if, seconds on a clock that's winding down. If they pick it off, it's like a punt. Yes. Devin Clark on the left side yeah. with Daytron Ellison. I have a feeling that's what they're going to do. And they are going to throw. He's going to lob it up to Devin Clark. But he overthrew him overthrew again. Overthrew him again. It's kind of hard to overthrow a 6'5 kid, but we did it. And it's going to be incomplete. They'll get it over turnover on downs. <laughs> so it's Definitely. first and 10. It's going to be uh, Memorial's ball, and I, the referee is standing my way, but I want to say it's 32-yard line. Nope, uh, 37. It's going to be 37-yard line. I, I even have my glasses yeah. on and misread that one. With 26 seconds left on the clock, you know, does Memorial even run a run a run a player just down and down to go into? They, the, I would, going if I was the them, I'd gamble the rest of the year. I'd I'd try to get anything. Trips to the uh, right side. They're going to send their back to the outside. They're going to throw a swing pass out to number thirteen. It falls incomplete. Resendez was there. Lozano just a little off on his passes. Again, I'm kind of I'm not understanding because I didn't think Flores was throwing the ball that poorly, but he's I haven't seen him since the first quarter. Hopefully, nothing's wrong with them. They just make made a little change, but yeah, definitely you've seen the difference in the offense of uh, the the way they were able to move down the field. So here's the handoff up the middle. He's going to get out to about the 36 yard line where he was met quickly, and I think. 
again. The big no, it was number 72 this time, Samaripa. Big tackle by Samaripa. By a big boy. Probably one of our biggest linemen we have. And they're going to let the clock run out as that's going to be the end of the first half. And uh, I guess we'll take a quick break and uh, we'll come back and uh, get started on the Johnny and Sons Peyton and Body Show, Body Shop halftime show. Well, we'll have our band playing first on the road, so we'll oh, probably right. do that listening to your roaring band when we get back out here. So we'll just, like I say, take a break real quick. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Vibe Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Hello, American. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Edgewood <laughs> Veteran Stadium. <laughs> we're having a good time here in San Antonio, Texas, as we're up 20 to nothing at half. Um, again, just Jack Edwards getting a little too excited. He had opportunities to throw three touchdown passes, and just the strength of his arm and being off balance a little bit, we didn't get those touchdowns. Yes, but definitely. he has done a good job. He just needs to calm down and set his feet when he's throwing the ball. Most definitely. As the Lockhart line, Roaring Band is on the field, and we're going to go ahead and cut our mics off and uh, turn the crowd mic on so you can continue listening to the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show in your Lockhart line, Roaring Band. the direction of Miss Taylor Seymour. The Lionettes are led onto the field by Captain Alexia Bright, Co-Captain Elena Davila, Junior Lieutenant Precious Garcia, Junior Lieutenant Brianna Gonzalez, Social Officer Chelsea Rodriguez, Social Officer Bella Herman, this week, the Lionettes will be performing a jazz routine with To Confidence.